Microsoft.com if I click on it. But even more interesting is I can, like a lot of the other controls, bind it to a data source. So what I'll do, I'll create a list of hyperlinks. So I'll create an XML file. I'll call it hyperlinks. So very quickly I'll show you a couple of the, the features of the XML editor. You can, it's pretty easy, especially just to create kind of a link, a link on the fly. So our first, our first link will be called um, Microsoft and the URL is Microsoft.com and I'll do a link for MSDN Okay, and finally one for ASP.NET. Okay, that's good. So we'll go back to our bulleted list control and bind it to a data source. I have to create a new data source. Choose XML file, and of course I could bind it to other things like a database or any arbitrary object. But we'll go to the XML file and choose hyperlinks. Now the this little wizard smart enough to inspect it and see what what options I have. I'll choose to bind the text to the text item and this to the URL and hit save. Now we have to bring it up here in order to see it. And here we have these three. So it's pretty handy if you if you're using bulleted list or you need a list of hyperlinks, works great. Okay? Let's move to the uh, the next piece. I'm just going to use little uh, HTML HR tags just to separate our little, the little demos. Now I'm going to talk about the file upload control. If you need to have a, have a means to upload files to your site, it's pretty easy. Uh, first you drag the file upload control and here you get the browse button and a text box where the user would, would um, go browse to the local path on their computer for a file. I need a button to actually do the upload itself. So let me change the text to upload. And then I'll have a server-side hyperlink which I'll set to point to the resultant file that's been uploaded. So we'll save that. Now let me create a folder here. And this will this folder will hold the files that we upload. Upload. That's fine. Upload. Okay, first we have to make sure that they actually that the end user actually put a file to be uploaded and they just didn't hit the upload button. So if the file upload one control has a file to be uploaded, then we'll execute this code. We um, want to tell the upload control to go ahead and save that file, but I have to base it off the local folder here. I need to get a give it a, a, a local path. Let's see, upload was the file name or the file path, and then I will append to that the file upload one dot file name and I'm going to need that again a couple times the, the actual file name and we tell it to go so that's going to save it and then we'll set our hyperlink text equal to the name of the file and set the hyperlink navigate URL equal to upload slash and the name of the file I think that will be good I have a f there it is. I have a file on my desktop that I can upload, and we can bring it up. Perfect. So you can see the file upload is real easy to use, and you should probably do some scrubbing on the file name and path that's coming in. You'll probably need to lock down the folder a bit more, but I just want to show you it's pretty easy to get a file name and start the upload process. Now the next piece I want to show you is something called URL mapping. This is really handy if you have a file on your system or in your website that has a really obscure URL or something that's complicated and you want to give it a, uh, a simpler name or a more human readable name. And I have uh, a handy GUID right here ready to go to demonstrate this. Let's say you have an HTML file called GUID underscore and then some crazy long name. And this works with uh, HTML or, or ASP.NET or any, any page really. So I have a really long name here. Actually, I better keep that, yeah, I'll just keep that long name on here. And it's it's empty, so that's fine. But if I want to have a hyperlink to that on my site, I would normally just drag it over, but you have a pretty long name. Instead, let's say I want to have a hyperlink that's simpler. And I'll put one 
equal to just GUID.htm. Now this page doesn't actually exist on our site, but that's okay because in the web config we can use the URL mapping to point to that file. So if I go to web config under system web, I turn on URL mappings. I need to enable it to true. Okay, I need to add an entry for the URL and make it relative to our site, GUA.htm. And then the mapped URL is equal to that really long, ugly looking name. So we'll save that and go back to our page and give that hyperlink a shot. So that one should work, but this is the one that we're testing, GUA.htm. And it works. Well, it goes to a page that's empty, but believe me, it, it does work. So that is the default that is the URL mapping. The final piece I want to show you is a new control called the multi view. Now the multi view is, is quite interesting. It's a very easy way for you to have um, a, a body of, of like imagine div tags that you can show and hide dynamically, but you can do it programmatically. In fact, I'm going to take these three little demos and make them all selectable inside this multi view. And the way it works, of course, is through some dragging and dropping. I bring the multi view onto the page and I need a view component for each one of these three sections. So that's our first one. View one will contain the whole bull bulleted list demo. Okay. View two is going to go right there. View two will have the file upload demo. And view three will contain the URL mapping demo. Let me just clean up these HRs. Okay, good. Now I need a way, I need a programmatic way to choose which view is active at any time. So for that I'll use a radio button list and just drop it in right there and have it automatically post back so we get the, the change events. And I'm going to code these by hand. So our, we have three of them. Our first one is the bulleted list and I'm going to give that a value of zero and you'll see why in a second. List item one is the file upload. And the final one is URL mapping, which has a value of 2. And let me set this up so it's horizontal instead of vertical. Okay, now the code that's executed when you change that is selected indexed changed. So we'll drop into the handler for that, which is empty. So let's do this. So we have a multi view one. The active view index. That's the, it's going to be a 0, 1, or 2 because we have three views. I'm going to set that equal to the radio button, the radio button list 1 to its selected index, or actually the selected value, probably the same thing. So with just one line of code, we can switch between the views there. So let's save that and bring it up in a browser. So I'll choose bulleted list, file upload, URL mapping. So it's a great way if you have a lot of code or a lot of, a lot of design on your page that you need to hide or if you need to be able to dynamically show and hide pieces, that's a good way to do it. So that's our tips and tricks video. Hope you enjoyed it and get a chance to look at some of the other videos. I think you'll find a lot more um, hidden features that we didn't specifically call out, but there's a lot here and I hope you have a good chance to use some of these techniques in your next site.